Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode, another episode of the show. Not just any old episode, but the 2011 Christmas special. Now, um, this is actually take two, believe it or not, of the intro. Why? Because the microphone wasn't turned on. Kind of need to do a take two on that. I think that's the first time I've ever done that, right? All right, so um, let's talk about, we got some wines here. I uh, did some special wines, a little bit different than I've done, uh, what I did the last time with, with Christmas wine. I didn't necessarily look for wines that you're going to be pairing with foods. I want ahead, wanted to go ahead and, and do something that had been suggested to me actually a couple years ago when I was talking about Christmas wines. And um, that's what these two wines here are. Uh, I use these wines for that. And then the third wine, we've got a, um, an ice Riesling. Uh, obviously the setup's a little different than normal. Uh, I've got some coffee cups here. I don't know if you can tell, but there's some steam coming out of those. Um, so we'll get to that in just a second here. Um, you're also going to see another first for the show. Uh, you're going to see a little segment inserted into the middle of it. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about a little bit of wine and uh, what's going on over here. Um, the first wine here is the uh, 2009 Lorval Pinot Noir uh, that is from the languedoc Rousson area of France. Now I bought this at World Market for a grand total of, da, 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 as I find it, $4.39. It's normally $5.99, but um, through the whole buy, let's say that buy four, save 10%, and then the, um, there's also a discount for being in their World Explorer program. So it ended up being $4.39 after all said and done. So, um, so yeah, a $6 bottle of wine. Now, I bought this wine because we did some mulling. And we'll cut to that right now. Okay, now for the cooking segment of the show. So, yeah, I've already done my little introduction, right? I don't know. I'm kind of winging. I don't really know how I'm doing all this, but I know I'll probably do my introduction and now about to show you how we're going to do some mulling of wine. Uh, and I'll go through the history of it uh, once we start drinking the wine. But uh, I've gotten all my ingredients together like the cooking shows do. It took me probably like 30 minutes to like put all this together, put the brown sugar in the thing and blah, 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 and get all my stuff put together. But, you know, anyway, because it doesn't take that, you know, they make them those shows make it look like you can get something cooked in 15 minutes and you can't. All right, so um, it's pretty simple with, uh, w with uh, mulling the wine. Um, all you need is some water. You'll need, uh, most of the recipes call for brown sugar. Um, you'll need some spices, and I bought this mulling spice at World Market for $5.99. I don't know if you can catch that a little bit. Um, it's just called mulling spice. Let me just tell you what's in here. You got orange peel, cinnamon, star anise, allspice, cardamom seed, cloves, that's it. So um, I tried to get as much as I could in there. So we're not going to do the entire bottle of wine because we're also going to taste the wine without the mulling. I want to be able to do a before and after. So uh, the recipe is on the back here. I cut everything in half so that um, I can only use half a bottle of wine. So you'll need the spices, got the brown sugar there. Um, most recipes, or made, well, the ones I saw, have talked about garnishing with a cinnamon stick, and uh, of course, any red wine, pretty much, um, preferably a dry red wine, nothing sweet, because you're already going to put sweetening stuff into it, and uh, water. So we'll go through this. Uh, we'll go through this right now. All right. So first, I'm going to put my water in there. Uh, this is five ounces of water. I've already pre-measured it. Um, and everyone also suggests you use either a crock pot or a ceramic type of um, pan or pot or whatever instead of like a metal one because metal probably might get a little bit of that metal metallic 
might be a little metallic transfer of flavoring so it's better to use this all right so i put my water in there let me see what else i'm supposed to do uh well my bottle of wine all right so we're gonna put half a bottle now i'm gonna just kind of estimate when i'm at a half a bottle i mean it's not going to be perfect oh wow so i got more to put in there now this wine i forgot to say which one this is uh this wine is uh the Lorval 2009 Pinot Noir. This is from the Languedoc region of France. Um, I didn't really, I didn't really, um, I don't know why I'm doing that in there. My hands are clean, by the way. Um, so I decided to just pick a French wine and something that was kind of light um, before I really did a lot of research on, on what kind of wine to do. Um, I decided to get something that was just kind of a, a, a not neutral but a medium wine nothing too heavy but nothing too too light um, because I wanted to the, hopefully the flavors will meld pretty well so that was about half a bottle of wine maybe a little bit more than that all right so I've got my water my wine then uh, I need to put in my uh, half now uh, this is half cup of brown sugar but since I'm only doing half a recipe I have a quarter cup of brown sugar already in there and That's in there. <laughs> I forgot to put something to stir it with. I use this to stir it. Eh, we'll use that. No, that won't work. Um, heck, I'll just use the cup. Here we go. Also, probably should have gotten something to put the the cup on since we're gonna get all this wine on it. I'll clean it up. I'm no Guy Fieri. I'm no Emerald or whoever else you want to say. All right, so mix that up a little bit. And then you're gonna put uh, your mulling spice. Now this says half a cup of mulling spice blend. Now there's a quarter cup in here. This actually, the whole tea ball thing or whatever, uh, seeper, steeper, um, is actually about a half a cup um, by volume. So um, it was a, uh, I, I ended up putting a half a cup by accident at first and I went, oh, I need a quarter cup. So just put that in here and uh, we'll end up simmering this uh, you don't want it to go to a boil so I'm gonna stop recording for a second I'm gonna move everything over to the stove and we'll kind of talk a little bit about the wine and all that and uh, I'll get things boiling so another edit wow I'm editing for something for once okay so now I've got the uh, we've got the wine uh, in the little hoopty nugget here okay a little thing here uh, on the stove I cranked it up the high just to start getting it hot a little bit to save a little bit of time um, I'm kind of messing with the uh, the heat element here but um you're gonna want to like i said you don't want to make this boiling but you do need to get it hot and i've never had i've never had this before now i do have a pre-mulled wine which i probably have already shown you um that i'm going to i'm not going to put it in a saucepan i'm going to microwave it i'm going to mic it <laughs> um but instead of using wine glasses uh, all the pictures show uses like a coffee cup or some type of mug probably a good idea because you know wine glasses especially the ones that I, I use tend to be really thin probably don't want to be putting any hot liquid in there plus since those the wine glasses that I use are the are the pretty big ones the garnish of a cinnamon stick is probably going to end up I mean even this is not going to be you know sticking out really nice but cinnamon stick will probably end up going all the way down there so I'm um, trying to bring this a little bit hotter here um, so let's talk a little bit about mulled wine in general. Um, it's a European thing. Uh, they did it back in actually Roman times. I don't have the, all the names. If I can try to sneak over here and look at the laptop real quick. Um, uh, anyway, I don't think they had the name in there for, for in Roman antiquity. I had to look at a couple websites. But um, the thinking is that it has to something to do with muddled and mulled that's where the word mulled came from um, and I saw a couple things about why it's called muddled some people thought because muddling kind of is like confusing and so they they kind of said that the it's mulled wine because it made people drunk and confused I don't really think it's really more like that this is um, some companies know generally confused state right so that was the one they thought that the uh, so mulled Muddled this could be a confused state and they said that the alcohol Possibly could do that, but I'm gonna check this other site here. I, didn't, I just didn't have a spot to put the Laptop not like I'm not gonna put it right here um, There was another thing 
uh, they didn't really say on this one. But um, you know, if you think about muddled or muddling, um, you know, you're you're you've got that uh, mortar and pestle, and you're when you make like an old fashioned or something like that, you're going to put like an orange and a cherry, and you're going to muddle it in there. So you're kind of combining stuff, or maybe you know, like they say, a confused state or whatever. Um, so you're 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 crushing some stuff. How it applies to this, I don't know. But when you think of muddling, that's what you're doing. You're kind of mixing, so you're kind of crushing some stuff. Or like when you do, you also can do it with, with medicine. Um, you can take the pill and you can muddle it too. Um, but, um, so, but apparently mold has something to do with muddling and they said confused state. So maybe it is the alcohol, I don't know. But um, it's been done for quite a while. Um, there's various names that has gone by. Uh, there's things like, uh, uh, actually even, even with well, medieval times they called them, let's see, hypocris, uh, or hypocris. It's kind of a, kind of a, a callback to Hippocrates because they felt it was kind of like a medicinal in ways. Um, other countries have called it other things. You know, Germany, Italy, France. Um, they they all call these things a little bit different, but effectively a lot of times it kind of means like hot wine or heated wine. Uh, vin chaud is, or chaud, I guess it is in French is you know, literally hot wine. Um, so you've got that. It's it's uh, starting to steam a little bit. I'm going to crank it up just a little bit more. Um, again, we don't want it to boil. Uh, this again, this particular wine that I'm using is uh, the Pinot Noir. Uh, on the back label says a medium bodied red wine, subtle earthiness, fresh cherry and black cherry on the nose. Okay, whatever. Um, I think it was uh, five five ninety nine at Roll the Market. I'd have to actually look at the receipt. Um, I'm gonna go back upstairs to get the receipt. Uh, it was it wasn't very expensive. And I didn't want to do something like a twenty or even a ten dollar bottle of wine because since I'm gonna be cooking a wine, I didn't want it. Especially if I messed it up, I didn't want to, like destroy something that might be halfway decent. Especially since I'm only using half a bottle, I might want to like drink it, drink it. Um, yeah, it's not quite hot enough. We're gonna crank it up a little more. Um, I've also got a pre-muddled or pre-mulled wine uh, that we're gonna discuss, but I did buy it already set up. It's called Holiday Wine. Uh, and the, uh, the thing was I was actually at the uh, Beaujolais tasting when I was at Wine to Find Wine Shop. And a gentleman came in and uh, he asked if uh, they had the Holiday Wine. And I'm thinking like wine for holidays, not and one called holiday wine, which that's what it is. All right, it's still steaming. I'm cranking up a little more. I want to get it just before boiling. Hey, I'm no expert. It's the first time I'm doing it. First time I've even done something like this. I should have probably started this a little bit later or earlier. Started recording later. Um, so I'm trying to do fluff. What else we got going on? Hey, why don't we talk about since I got stuff. Um, so I've got the Christmas. We're doing the Christmas done right, done one right now. I've got some. Uh, I've got some sparkling wines that we're going to be doing for New Year's. I've got four sparkling wines. Usually I only do like a three wine thing, like this, like today. I'm going to do a special. I had bought three wines, and then while well, I'm at World Market, and then I'm looking for like this wine actually, and I find a bottle of Sect from Germany. So I'm like. Well, I'm not going to put one of the other bottles away, so I was buy the bottle second. It was like it was know, like six bucks, seven bucks. It wasn't very expensive, so I was like, yeah, we'll buy that. I uh, also got some other cool wines. I've got a wine coming up um, sometime in January that uh, is, uh, as far as grapes or as far as the type of grape it is, it's pretty darn rare. Um, in the sense that it's one of only a few, literally a handful of red grapes that actually have wine grapes that actually have red juice when you when you uh when you crush them so um it was a cool little find um so you'll see that and then um, i still have a couple more french wines to do and uh, we're also going to look at doing another uh, uh collaboration with uh sissy barreto uh for episode 210 since this is the area code of san antonio we're looking to do another collaboration at the shop so um, we've got all that going on. It's still heating up. It's steaming pretty good here. Uh, I can kind of hear it not quite bubbling. Here it comes. I see little, little bubbles in there. It's probably good right now. 
whoops, that wasn't that wasn't good. <laughs> One second we go off camera to look at the little thing on the back. Just want to say uh, heat slowly to desired temperature. Do not boil. Well, it looks like it's pretty darn hot right now, so we're going to go ahead and turn off the heat, and I'm going to remove it from the heat for a little bit. I'm going to try to get this thing out. I'll use the other cup to put this in. There we go. Use that cup for that. Now I'll pour this in here. Now, I mean, it's, you know, I got all the spices going here. I don't know, it smells kind of cool. All right, so I'll pour this in here. Now this is probably right now a little hotter than I would like to personally um, uh, drink. So it's going to cool for a little bit while I get the rest of the set completed for the actual just regular review. But for the purposes of this, you put a little cinnamon stick in there. It falls all the way in there. But just imagine the cinnamon sticks a little bit longer. Anyway, uh, heat's off. Got that off the heat. So that's basically a mulled wine. Now, we're about to drink some of this wine. We're going to drink unmulled and mulled, and we're going to do the pre-mulled wine. And I'm going to do that also. I'm going to do that room temperature, and I'm going to get that heated up. I want to see what the differences are, see how the heating really, I'm assuming, uh, releases a lot of the aromas and probably is a much better product. I mean, I took a little sniff of the wine. It was kind of like, I don't know. So, in uh, the bottle, does say you need to heat it up. It's not something you drink room temperature. But I want to kind of see what it's like room temperature anyway. So, uh... We're going to go back to the table and then i um, going to uh, start tasting some wine. All right, and we're back from the mulling. Um, so haven't even tried any of this yet. I've, I've got everything set up. Um, so like I said, this wine is a 2009 Pinot Noir. And uh, like I said, we're going to do, we're gonna do a, 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 um, a before and after type of thing. So first, we're going to... Um, do the before here. I'm gonna check it out. Now, all I have right now going on is just the light, that, that 160 LED light going on. So we're kind of experimenting a little bit here. I've got, you know, whatever light's coming through the window. Don't have the light over here on. It looks like it was pretty bright. It looks like it's pretty good on the camera. Um, and of course, I got the, got the Christmas tree going on in the background. Oh yeah, I wanted to do this real quick. Uh, we'll talk about this in a second. There. Okay. Um, boom. All right. So let's try out the wine. I got all this other spices going on, so I can smell the mulled wines already. Um, so that might affect this a little bit. Okay. Um, somewhat earthy on the nose. A tad bit of funk to it. Um, no, nothing huge barnyard on it, but you know a little bit. You know earthiness, more earthy than barnyard. Maybe a tad of leather. You know the nose overall not too bad. Fruit, dark fruit, nothing, nothing spectacular. All right, let's see how it tastes. It's got a little bit of a bite to it. It don't look like the same bottle. Um, it's got a little bit of a bite to it. I think it's, it feels like it's a little, a little hot, I guess. But it's only twelve percent alcohol. Nothing big. Pretty basic wine. Um, nothing spectacular about it. It's got again some of that earthiness to it. Maybe some of those dark fruits, but I, I probably wouldn't buy this wine again. Let's put it that way. 
if I was going to rate it, which I am going to rate it, um, give it a score. I mean, it's it's like I said, it's a pretty pretty basic wine. There's really not much to it. Um, it's not complex. They talk about having black cherry, fresh cherry and black cherry on the nose. I mean, maybe subtle earthiness. I mean, the, the, let's be honest, the nose was a lot better than, than the palate. Um, the bouquet was definitely better. But it's pretty basic. I, I'd give it like a, I don't know, like a, a 78. Nothing I would necessarily recommend to buy. So, actually, we're going to leave that in the glass for a little bit. And I, I have two glasses just because, well, I have two glasses. All right, so now let's try the mulled version. Now, I had taken out the cinnamon stick because um, I didn't want it to just become too cinnamony, cinnamony, whatever. Here, cinnamon sticks right here. Um, I talked about how much I paid for the for the mulled spice. That was like five ninety nine. Um, the other stuff I had to buy because we didn't really have any brown sugar in the house and didn't have any cinnamon sticks. So, um, cinnamon sticks cost me four forty eight. Kind of expensive, I guess. The brown sugar cost a total of a dollar twenty five. Just saying. Bought that at Target. Bought the cinnamon sticks at HEB. Target didn't have cinnamon sticks, or I couldn't find them. They weren't obvious. I had to go across the highway to go to HEB. So I got the little, got a little cinnamon stick in there. It's mulled. I had, it, I did reheat this in the microwave because it was starting to cool down in the time I was doing this. I was also trying to do a new live streaming service, and the 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 desktop application said, "Oh, there's an update." Okay, I updated it, and then it crashed. So. We'll try that some other time. All right, so I got the cinnamon stick in there. Now we're going to try it. Guarantee this tastes a lot better than than that. A little hot. We don't want to like be blowing the microphone here. Well, it's it's kind of tasty. I mean, I can see the appeal to having a mulled wine. Um, it definitely, I, I'll be honest, it definitely improved this wine. Um, but um, it's you know, I've got all those spices I talked about on the on the back of the label of the uh, of the mulling spices. Um, definitely tons of cinnamon. Um, but the, you're getting some of the fruitiness from the wine. There's no earthiness at all. But it's it's cinnamon for days, probably because I had the cinnamon stick in there for quite a while and then I took it out and I put more in there. Um, and there's already cinnamon in the mulling spices. I mean, it really kind of makes me think of a cinnamon, you know, a, a cinnamon bun. Cinnamon roll, whatever. A bit of the cherry is coming through. Um, so. It's kind of like, you know, heating up some, some cherry juice, um, but not too bad. I'm not going to rate it because it's not really something I guess I, I'd rate. Well, I, mean, I don't know. If I was going to rate it, which I am again, um, definitely about a 78, but nothing spectacular. I'd probably give it like an 80 as far as the mulling process kind of helped it out. So um, I'll try this one again real quick. I don't know. The earthiness is coming through a little bit more on it, but I don't think it's really anything spectacular. We're going to dump this. All right, so now <clears throat> we're going to go to, let's put this over here with the rest of the stuff. This, now I bought this at Ceci's Wine Shop, um, Wine, a fine wine shop. Um, and this is that wine said, you know, they talked about it was, you know, the guy walked it wanted holiday wine. So this is Brotherhood Winery. It is America's oldest winery. Uh, they were uh, founded in 1839 in New York. Uh, it's called Holiday Spiced Wine. Bought it for $14 at, uh, at the shop. Um, it says a spiced wine, red wine with natural herbs and spices, uh, New York State wine. It doesn't tell you what kind of grapes they use, so I have no clue what um, what they used in this thing. Um, it's already been spiced. Now on the back of the label it says again to make sure you serve it piping hot. Hey, let's throw that cinnamon stick again in there. I don't need a second one. I don't know why I'm swirling the 
dregs of that. Um, they also talked about like serving it on ice, so like a chilled wine. Um, again, I have no idea what the grapes are, and going to their website, which is kind of cool and all, um, it doesn't say either what kind of uh, what kind of um, grapes they're using. So it's kind of difficult to figure that out. It could be American varietals, it could be European, who knows what it is. All right, so let's just, as a regular wine, let's see what it's like. I, it, it smells really like alcoholic grape juice, um, very grapey. Um, so I'm going to guess it's Concord or it's Catawba, Catawba, whatever, Catawba, whatever that the other, that or Norton or one of the typical American varietals that are used. But you can smell some of the spices in it. It's not overwhelming. Um, it's, it's really kind of a, just a grapey, a grapey juice that has, definitely has alcohol that's got a little bit of spice to it. More of the spices are coming through now. Palette tastes very much like the bouquet. It's definitely grapey, spicy, you know, with the, the Christmas spices. Um, no one spice seems to be really coming through heavily, unlike, you know, with the mulled wine of the Pinot Noir, where, you know, besides the mulling spices having cinnamon, putting a cinnamon stick in there. Um, so I don't know what the, all the spices they're using, but. Um, um, it's it's not bad, but definitely I don't think I would. And it's sweet, like it's grapey. We all know that I'm not a fan of sweet red wines to begin with, um, or this type of sweet sweet red wines. Uh, I feel like you should have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with this, or peanut butter cookies. Um, it's not a bad wine. I just it's definitely not a preference. But on its own, I, I'm guessing you definitely need to heat the thing up to make it taste better. Um, other than that, it's just all right 78 again I guess on the on the score structure so now let's go through the mold wine now again I all I did with this one is I just threw the cup pour it pour it in a coffee cup and put it in the microwave um, I got this I got the cinnamon in there stir that up we'll take the cinnamon stick out so it's not hitting me in the face all right so smelling it initially it makes me think of like I've gone into some of the um, Honestly, like a, like a Costco or or a, no, like a like one of those um, not like not kind of Pier One like, but more of the a uh, bigger box store that when you get into the, like the, the the Christmas the holiday aisle, you're smelling the 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 all the type of Christmas spices. So I'm smelling that, and it really makes me think I'm in like in the in the Christmas aisle at a grocery store or or like at a big box store. Unlike this wine, where obviously it changed the flavor profile of it because there were spices in it, and I felt the mulling process improved the wine, and heating it improved it, not so much here. I mean, granted, I'm not tasting this wine without the spices in it, so I can't really compare it fairly or make a, a true comparison between the two wines, but it just tastes like it's heated up. Um, I don't get anything really out of it. I mean, yeah, I added a cinnamon stick to it. I don't really get anything out of it. It just tastes like hot grape juice with a little bit of alcohol and some spices in it. It's 78 still after you heat it up. I mean, at least this wine, I don't know. I mean, I think I should probably rate it a little bit higher or maybe rate this a little bit lower, maybe like a 75 overall. Um, Problem is, this is a personal preference thing. I, you know, the guy that came into the wine shop probably loves this wine. He probably thinks it's not the best wine in the world, but he probably really likes it. It puts you in the holiday spirit. You heat it up. It's probably more about the experience rather than um, just a straight, like, as evaluate the wine. 
And that's a problem when you do these reviews, whether it's me or anyone else doing a review of a wine. You're trying to be very clinical about it. You're trying to be very, like, not let your emotion uh, or let the situation uh, influence it. But I'm sure if this was if this was a holiday Christmas party and I had had the heated this wine up and put in a nice big pitcher and poured it from people and put some cinnamon thumb, blah, 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 blah. Everybody would probably think it would be like, oh, this is pretty good. I like it. Ah. And then when you come home like I'm doing, it doesn't probably taste as good as you thought it did because the environment really influences it. I'm not really, not really digging it. We're going to dump that. Not really worried about the coffee cups in front of me. We're going to put those out of the way. Okay. Now let's go with the ice wine. All right, again, I got this at World Market. Um, this is a, should be a, no, it's probably a five, 500 milliliter bottle. Let's see what it says on here. It should say it on here somewhere. I should have looked at it ahead of time. 375, actually, that's what I thought it was. It seemed a little too big for, or small for a 500. Now this is a, this costs 879 after all my discounts, uh, regularly 1199 for a 375. So that's like, not quite less than half a bottle. So if this was a full 750 milliliter bottle, you're talking almost $30 for a bottle. Um, actually a little bit over, probably between $30 and $40 for, for this in a 750. So remember, ice wines are not cheap. Uh, and one reason why they, they put it in smaller bottles a lot of times is so that you can, the average person might actually want to buy it. So this is um, from the Jay-Z Wine Company. Now, um, the actual wine company is in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. Ohio. All right. No, I have nothing. I don't like Ohio State University. I just, I like to say Ohio like that. Anyway, I lived there for a minute. Um, but this wine, the grapes are actually coming from Yakima Valley. Um, Wine made from post-harvest frozen Riesling grapes. And this is a Riesling. Um, on the back, it does tell you what the sugar at harvest was. It was 23.4% by weight. So they're not using like the bricks type of measurement. Um, residual sugar, 17% by weight. And 10.5% alcohol. Vinted and bottled by Frost Bitten. Richland, Washington. So they did everything in Washington, but the company that I guess that owns the label is out of Ohio. Now we're going to use the fresh glass. Pour a little bit in here. Now I did have this in the refrigerator the past couple days. I took it out probably about a little over an hour ago, maybe an hour and a half ago. So it's a slightly chilled. It's not ice, ice cold. Um, just because I, I wanted it a little bit chilled, but I also, didn't, I also wanted to be able to smell and taste everything. Um, I don't remember there was a vintage on this. There doesn't seem to be a vintage on this. Um, and that might be by design. They may have more than one vintage in this. Not really sure. Don't know why there isn't one, but anyway. Uh, Jay-Z Wine Company, and it has nothing to do with Jay-Z. It's just the guy's initials, Joe uh, Zaucha. Um, they have one called Once Bitten Riesling. I didn't really look at that, but it's got a big green apple on it, so it's probably loads of apples. Um, we've got the Frost Bitten Ice Riesling, some called Teacher's Pet and Pizza Vino. So probably just, you know, some, some cool wines that just are, are meant to be nothing super complex. So let's check it out. All right, so very typical ice wine type of stuff, uh, apricots. Some sweetness. I mean, you get, definitely get the sweetness on the nose, but mostly just like that apricot type of uh, aroma on the nose. Sweet, very sweet, but also a good amount of acid on it. Mouth is really watering, so you've got a decent amount of acid on here. Um, it's not focused or anything, it's not like razor sharp, but it definitely coats coats the tongue, coats the mouth. A good, this is, uh, again, these, I, I think of these wines can also be, you know, not just digestives, they can be aperitifs. You can really have 
start your night, start your meal with something like this, um, and you can end it as a dessert wine. Um, but you can really kind of start this as like just like a like you know no no pairing, just start it with the wine. Don't pair it with necessarily any food. Eat your food, and then afterwards, you can pair this with some lighter desserts. Um, you could probably even pair it with some cheeses, but I, I'm thinking more of like some lighter desserts. Um, but that's what I was going to get. Hold on. A typical style. I didn't bring everything to the... Didn't bring everything to the table. And with the wireless microphone, you can hear me the whole way. All right. So, this will actually get me to the next, to the next segment here. Um, so, in, in true Italian form, Christmas-wise, uh, my Aunt Brenda, Aunt B, from New Jersey, yes, remember, I'm from Jersey, uh, sent the care package. Now, she typically makes cookies and this little, little thing here that I'm unraveling. Get this out of the way. It's called struffola. I'll be honest, I didn't really look up what where struffola comes from, my Italian pastry of some sort, I guess. Of course, the gallery will probably tell me something different after we're done recording. They'll probably say you should have looked it up. Anyway, um, hey, maybe I can just kind of struffola. I don't know. Hey, what do you know? I kind of spelled it almost right. So, um, there you go. Italian honey balls. And that's really what they are. They're, they're, they're these these pastries, and they got some honey on them, and they got like the the little colored the the the, the colored um, candy dots or whatever. See, and then hey, here you go. You know it's Christmas here when the pyramids of honey balls, stufula, not stru, stufula. I've been saying it wrong all my life. Uh, start to appear in bakeries. The only problem is all of the bakeries I've bought them from bake them, and I call those air balls. That's what they taste like. My mother always fried them. Um, but then struffoli. I was way spelled Italian. Well, there you go. Anyway, see, I was saying it right. So anyway, um, so these things, um, I bet you this would be a good pairing. And that was kind of what I was going for um, when I bought the wine. So like I said, it's got the little, the little uh, candy, colored candy dots. It's all sticky. It's gooey. Um, typically, uh, she makes them, but this, this obviously was bought. But there's the, the one with the almonds, that's for dad, and the one without the almonds, that's for me, and we're usually fighting over it, and we're usually yelling at him because he eats all mine, too. He was good this year. He didn't eat all these yet. But I told him not to because I was using it for the show. All right, so, I mean, they're pretty good. Not as, bad, not as good as how uh, Brenda makes them. But she made cookies, too. I'm not going to do that. And here's a really cool thing. She got us all ornaments. And I got me a little wine glass ornament. Looks really cool. Took it off the tree just before we started recording. Actually, no, I took it off the tree just now. All right, so let's pair this up. It works. It's really nice. The honey and the apricot work pretty well. It's um, like I said, it's a light. Having a kind of a light dessert with it. The wine's a little heavy. So you don't want to go a little bit heavier on the on the dessert, but overall pretty good. As a wine, you know, I typically score these wines like in the 90s. This one, I'm gonna probably give it like an, an, an 89. Not a bad wine at all. 89 is a good score. But it doesn't seem to have that extra wow factor I've had in sweeter wines or dessert wines but um, you know I, I mean I recommend it you get a small bottle uh, getting it for 12 bucks or under especially if you're in some type of purchasing like thing like with world market which you know they're probably one of the big distributors of it anyway so I'm gonna imagine this is probably doesn't have a huge amount of production and World Market likes to find these somewhat specialty wines, but uh, definitely pretty good. Definitely like it. Struffala. See, I was saying it right the whole time. All right, so uh, a couple other things. 
Um, this, I bought this really specifically for the, uh, the live tasting that I did over at uh, uh, Ceci's Wine Shop. This is the Beringer, Beringer, not, not, not to be confused with the wine Beringer. Um, let's see, what's it, the Zenix 502 mixer. Now, nothing complicated about this, but the whole point of having this mixer is these microphones don't really put out a lot of power. Now, putting it into the camera is good enough, but when you try to put it in the little mixer I bought from the same company, Asden, that mixer has no power to it. So, you got really nothing out of it when I did that. This, and it's, it's really reasonable, it was like 30 bucks. Um, five channels, um, you can have like a left and a right channel. I put everything on one side, and then of course, in, in, the, in when I edit, I have to put everything, it's called dual mono. I don't really have any true stereo, but like I can even like hook in a regular microphone jack, which um, uh, Melissa actually had the regular microphone, and I gave her the the good microphone because I also had gotten a, a, a cheaper microphone from Asden, but I was like, nah, use the prof more professional quality uh, Audio Technica microphone, and she obviously sounded the best of everybody to be honest. Um, so you have that, and you have regular regular uh, quarter inch jack. Uh, microphone inputs, how to get a little adapter so you can fit the 3.5 millimeter thing that these have. Um, you have a headphone thing, you can listen to the mix. I found that it seemed like the, the, the headphones, it seemed like the mix was really quiet, but it was still good enough. And I kind of just have, it's all, it's all really kind of preset right now. I have it set how I like it. Um, but um, it worked out great and i glad I got it because that way I can do you know those types of things again I can have multiple people multiple microphones going on so highly recommend that you can stop by the website I have it listed in something so I think I've already have it I think I have this listed somewhere we have the direct link where you can go to my Amazon store and buy it and get me credit anyway um, that's gonna do it for today's show uh, I guess I've got some more French wines coming up we've got the New Year's Eve thing which is probably gonna be the next episode uh, though I might put the, I might put the third uh, wine shop one in between these two, um, but if not, it'll be the New Year's Eve will be the next one, and then uh, we go into January, and uh, got some good stuff. We'll see everyone next time. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs>